Chapter six, Bouncing. After we finished playing Cinderella, the Nana called us to dinner. Me and Lucille and that Grace skipped into the big dining room. We sat at a long, shiny table. Pretty soon, Lucille's Nana came in from the kitchen and she gave us our dinner. And guess what? Its name was Beans and Frank. Hooray, I said. Hooray for Beans and Frank, cause that is my favorite kind of home cooking. The Nana did a teeny smile. Well, we usually have a cook, but I gave her the night off, she said. After that, the Nana poured milk into beautiful sparkly glasses. Ooh, Nana, these are your best crystal glasses, said Lucille, real thrilled. I love these expensive things. Me too, I love these expensive things too, I said. Only too bad for me, cause nobody told me that crystal glasses were very heavy. And so when I picked up my glass, it slipped right out of my hand and it fell on the floor and it broke into lots of pieces. Lucille's whole mouth came open. Oh no, you broke it. You broke my Nana's crystal glass. The Nana's face was reddish and scrunchy. Sorry, Nana, I said real soft. Sorry I broke your crystal glass. The Nana sucked her cheeks way into her head. Well, let's just try to be more careful, shall we, dear? She said. I bobbed my head up and down. We shall, I said back. After that, I ate my beans and franks very careful. Only pretty soon, my frank spilled off my fork and he landed on the Nana's white tablecloth. Oh no, hollered Lucille. That's my Nana's good linen cloth. She brought it all the way from Ireland. The Nana's face was twisty and puffy. I quick pushed my plate away from me. My stomach felt in a tight knot. Yeah, only guess what? I'm not actually hungry anymore, and so I would just sit here and not spill anything, I think. The Nana cleaned up my messes with a wet cloth. After she finished, she brought us chocolate ice cream for dessert. Only too bad for me, because a teeny plop of ice cream dropped right off my spoon, and it landed on my chair cushion. The Nana did a big breath. You're a bit of a bull in a china shop, aren't you, dear? She said. Sorry, Nana, I said. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. The Nana patted my hand very stiffish. Quite all right, she said, kind of mumbly. After that, I got down from the table and me and my friends went back to Lucille's room. And guess what? Things got funner. Because Lucille said we could play with the games in her closet on account of they weren't even expensive. First, we played chutes and ladders. Then we played Twister and Bingo and Chinese Checkers and tic tac toad and Candyland. Plus, also, we played Let's Spin till we get real dizzy and fall down. And guess what? I didn't even break anything. Hey, I think I'm getting the hang of this party, I said very happy. Excuse me. Just then, the Nana knocked on Lucille's door. Time for you ladies to put your pajamas on, she told us. I danced all around the room real happy. Hooray, I said. Hooray for pajamas, because I brought my favorites. I quick put them on. See them, Nana? See how biggish and baggish they are? That is how come they feel so comfortable. The Nana's eyes looked down at me. How very charming, she said. Just then, that Grace jumped right in front of me. Look at mine, Nana, she said. See mine? My pajamas have neon green polka dotties on them. How very colorful, said the Nana. All of a sudden, Lucille popped out of her big closet. Ta-da! Look at me, everyone. I am wearing my beautious pink satin nighty. See me? See how lovely I look? I look like a gorgeous model in this thing, she said. 
Lucille let me and that Grace feel her material. How very smoothy, I said. After that, me and Grace unrolled our sleeping bags on the floor, and then Nana took his sil the silk bedspread off of Lucille's bed. Time to get your beauty sleep, princess, she told Lucille. Then those two kissed and hugged goodnight, and then Nana shut the door. Only guess what? Lucille didn't even get in bed. She kept twirling all around in her pink satin nightgown. This is how models twirl, she said. They twirl so you can see their fronts and their backs. Lucille wouldn't stop twirling. See my front? See my back? She said. Me and that Grace got up on her bed and walked to watch her twirl. Lucille's bed was soft and cushy. We bounced up there a teeny bit. Lucille stopped twirling. Hey, don't, she said. That bed is for beauty sleep only. I patted her bed, very admiring. Yeah, only too bad we can't actually play up here because this mattress is a bouncy one, I said. Just then, Lucille's face did a sneaky smile. Want to bounce, she said real soft. Want to really, really bounce? She tiptoed to the door and looked down the hall. Come on, follow me, she whispered. I grabbed Philip, Johnny, Bob, and followed after Lucille and that Grace. We tiptoed down the hall and around the corner. Then Lucille opened the door to a big guest room, and there was a giant bed in that place. See it, she said. See how huge that bed is? My Nana had it specially made in case we have tall company. Lucille quick shut the door after us. Come on, let's go, she said. And so all of us run to the big bed, speedy quick, and we jumped and jumped and jumped on that thing. I sang a joyful song. It is called Jumping, Jumping, Jumping on the Giant Bed. Jumping, jumping, jumping on the giant bed. I sang only too bad for me because all of a sudden I remember something very important and it is called mother and daddy said no jumping. I got off the bed speedy fast. Yeah only here's the problem I said I'm not actually allowed to jump because mother and daddy said no jumping and so you guys should stop jumping too because that would be polite of you. Lucille and that Grace didn't pay attention to me. That is how come I had to get back on the giant bed and shout in their faces. Stop jumping, I said, because I am not allowed to jump, and you guys shouldn't jump too. Grace springed way high in the air. Who's jumping? I'm not jumping, she said. She giggled very silly. I'm bouncing. Just then, my whole face got happy, and I hugged and hugged that girl, because Mother and Daddy didn't say I couldn't bounce. After that, I bounced and bounced and bounced. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing on the giant bed, I sang. I bounced till sweat came on my head, and then I flopped down on the bed to rest. I flopped on a plumpery pillow. Ooh, Lucille, this is the most plumpery pillow I have ever even saw, I told her. Of course it is, silly, said Lucille. That's because my Nana has all her pillows handmade in Sweden. I quick swing the plumpery pillow over to my friend Grace. Grace, hey Grace, feel how plumpery this pillow is, I said. Only Grace didn't actually see it coming and it accidentally hit her in the head. I peeked at her under that thing. Yeah, only that didn't even harm you, I bet, because plumpery pillows don't hurt people. Right, Grace? Right? That Grace did a teeny grin. Then she took the plumpery pillow off of her head and she swinged it all around and she hit me in the tummy. Oof, I said. Then I laughed and laughed. Hey, I was right. Plumpery pillows don't hurt people. After that, I hit Lucille in the head with the my plumpy pillow. Plus also, I hit Grace again. Then those guys got their own plumpery pillows and all of us kept on hitting each other very fun. Only just then a mistake happened because I didn't even know there was a rip in my plumpery pillow. And so the next time I hit Grace, 
all of my feathers exploded out of it. There were a million bazillion of those floaty things. They filled the whole air practically. Lucille did a gasp. That Grace did a gasp too. <gasps> I danced around very giggling. Hey, it's snowing, it's snowing, it's not. Just then, the door swinged open very fast. It was Lucille's Nana. She saw me holding the broken plumpery pillow. My heart pounded very hard inside of me. Hello, I said very nervous. How are you today? I am fine, except I'm having a little bit of a feather problem apparently. The Nana walked at me very slow. Then she took my pillow out of my hands and she hided her face in that flatty thing and she didn't come out for a real long time. <laughs>